Fleet Air Master John Curtis from Australia. Today I've got a very special presentation uh, this morning in late titled Tuesday, it's Wednesday here in Australia. I was fortunate enough to play Magnus Carlsen, the real Magnus Carlsen in round three of late titled Tuesday. I was in shock as it was in the tournament. I um, only played one grandmaster this particular occasion and it just happened to be the greatest player that has ever lived and the highest rated player in the tournament. Magnus Carlsen himself rated 3,359 from Norway. That's right. And uh, as you can see, my rating for this uh, particular tournament was, I was down to 2,112. My normal real rating at Blitz is about 2,300. So, uh, and I can play above that. I'll beat the occasional Grandmaster and uh, beat the occasional 2,600 players. So, but what I'm always after is I'm after a Grandmaster scalp. And uh, in this particular game, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you exactly what I was thinking. But I'll be honest with you, I was really thinking at one stage that I was def I assessed the board and I thought that I was beating Mal Ma uh, Magnus Carlsen and I was getting ready to write up his adoption papers. That's right, I was going to adopt Magnus Carlsen and beat him up and make world news. Well, I thought I might, but um, being 71 years old of age and being a bit slow nowadays, um, Magnus Carlsen's got a speed element to his game and uh, you're going to find out that it was this speed element that got him over the line and saved his scalp. I'm going to get straight into the game now. Okay, I opened up with d4. I thought I'm going to play a logic behind that. I was thinking I'll play a solid game uh, where um, it's harder to make mistakes. I find that um, if, if you're playing e4 systems, Positions are, are that much more complicated and um, the tactics can be out of this world sometimes. <clears throat> but I do have a thorough positional knowledge of the Queen's Pawn and I thought, well, okay. He played d5. I played knight f3 because I know Magnus will play uh, this system himself. Often he'll fee and shadow his bishop, play c4. And I've seen that, that position that he's played in world titles and stuff. You know, he played bishop f5, book move, and straight away the first thing I was thinking was I was thinking that he's left these squares here a little bit weak. Now, that's the trade-off for the rapid development and control of the e4 square. But the engine says this is a book move, activates a bishop by developing it off its starting square. And, uh, and so it's logical. I didn't know that at the time. I thought, hold on. Isn't that sort of a weakness? But uh, So my plan was to try to exploit that square. Uh, so I played c4, and that was the intention. Play c4, because previously what I'd done is I'd made, I played dummy chess, and I was playing the move c3, and the uh, higher rated players were, were starting to punish me a little bit with their set systems. And because uh, c3 is white, in this type of position, it's just basically weak, a bit too timid, and doesn't cause black any problems. Anyway, paint e6, it's a book move, it's all theory at this stage. The evaluation bar just gives white the normal slight plus, having a white pieces. So we haven't made a mistake or anything yet, okay? I played knight c3, developed a piece, and uh, here we're putting pressure on the pawn on uh, d5. And we've got this idea, queen to b3. Anyway, he plays knight to f6. And I thought to myself for a second, great, well, he's defending his pawn uh, here. And um, queen here may be too early after knight c6. So I thought to myself, well, develop a bishop. Don't ignore your development because you're playing Magnus Carlsen. So I developed my bishop. Oh no, I didn't do it just yet. Yeah, I played queen b3. There you go, I played queen b3. But I was thinking maybe I should pin that knight first. Anyway, he played knight there, and that's that's when I decided. That's right. When he played this, I thought, 
I remember the uh, a lot of, lot of the Russian type systems where you play queen takes c4 and bishop to f4, put pressure on the c pawn down here. And I thought, oh, all right then, but I thought I might just hit his knight, right? And the engine says, oh, it's a good move. You stop your opponent from being able to eventually win a pawn. Well, there you go. So um, he might have been threatening something strange like knight here or something like that, or no, knight here, and then captures with the pawn. And it could have been uh, very dangerous. So um, th that's the idea. Just develop the bishop, rapid development as quick as possible, and still have an eye with this uh, b pawn here. You play bishop b5, and the engine says, this is a great move. It blocks the attack on a pawn that could have been captured. So the this is a, a real, um, what's an engine move? Magnus is playing, as usual, um, perfect chess, I should think. I played bishop takes knight. Now the idea is to capture on f6 and be able to capture the d pawn. He played queen takes, star move, best move. The valuation bar gives the position as approximately equal. Just a tiny little smidgen for white. And I thought to myself, what's well, now or never? If I don't take that pawn, if I don't capture this pawn on the square, well, I'm not, not, I've got no winning chances. So I took the pawn off. Engine says, bad move, Johnny. Now, and then I asked myself, um, um, after I looked at the uh, chess.com um, analysis room computer and the engine uh, told me that this is a, uh, a bad move, I thought, well, why is that a bad move? And uh, in actual fact, Magnus didn't see it. He didn't see why it's a bad move, but the correct move, the correct move Magnus, I'll show you what Magnus played. He played pawn takes pawn uh, and he got a cross through it. Bad move. Bad boy Magnus Carlsen, you've made a mistake. Okay, not, not like Magnus, but the correct move is actually knight takes pawn. All right, knight takes pawn. And uh, the whole idea is obviously you can't take the bishop because of the knight check. And should you capture the knight, or well, the queen can come in and all the black minor pieces are highly activated, okay? However, Magnus plays pawn takes pawn. So what I looked at the position, I thought, what's wrong with taking a pawn? And I thought, well, is Magnus trying to just sort of bluff me or something? You never know. He plays, I know he plays as Dr. Drunkenstein sometimes. And I thought, maybe he's just on the piss. <laughs> Excuse the, the language, but I thought, it's always possible he might be drunk. And I thought, is that a free pawn or not? And I thought, well, if I don't take it, I'll never know. And uh, logic tells me, well, my king seems to be fairly safe. The only move I'm, I haven't played to develop is pawn to e3. However, if I uh, just don't take now, he'll, he can castle queenside even. And uh, or just play rook to d8 or, yeah, rook to d8 or castle queenside, and uh, just go for tactics and stuff. And I thought, oh no, Magnus will know what he's doing then, especially if he's not a pawn down. So I played e3. I looked at the pawn, I thought, oh, I'd like to take that pawn. But I erred on the, the, um, the safety side. I thought, no, I'm going to make my position solid first and threaten his pawn. Try to stop him castling. Anyway, he did castle. But he got a question mark and exclamation mark for that move. It's here and I thought, no, nope, live or let die. You know the James Bond film. I thought, I'm just going to grab the pawn and try to hang on. Anyway, Magnus played rook e8. Best move. Here in this position, I played bishop e2. I'll tell you why. When I looked at this position, I thought, uh-oh, hold on, Magnus is up to no good. Magnus wants to play, well, he, he wants to play uh, rook hits uh, queen, followed by knight takes pawn and bust my whole king wide open, or 
play rook here and then play bishop here and then play knight takes pawn. So I thought to myself, gee whiz, this rook e8 looks dangerous. So I stopped at this stage and uh, if you have a look at the clock here, I, I was on 2 minutes 32 and I went down to 2 minutes 08. So I spent 24 seconds on this move, bishop e2. I did consider other moves, but I thought, no, I've got to play this move. Anyway, Magnus played bishop, hits uh, queen. And I thought to myself, well, that's interesting, but uh, what can I do here? And I thought to myself, oh my God, if I'm playing queen here or something, he's got this massive attack uh, on this pawn here with this discovery. And uh, I was starting to be, get a bit, bit uh, cautious. So I've got two minutes and eight seconds on my clock. Magnus has got 2 minutes 19, so he's used time too to come up with this move. But it's a question mark move. I played queen g5. Now, when I put, yeah, in this position, I wanted to change queens. And I thought, I calculated that um, uh, there's an end game here. But I, I, I wasn't too frightened of the end game. I, I thought, oh, I don't mind if he takes the queen and I take with the knight and he takes this pawn because the, the G pawn, because my central pawns are, are basically very strong. So I wasn't worried about that. I wasn't happy about it, but I wasn't worried. Anyway, in this position, the engine says queen here is the best move. All right, queen there, queen to h5. Well, I didn't know that. I'm not using an engine. But I just calculated that, that my best move would be queen here. I'm down to 1 minute and 40 seconds. I have to pick up speed. Magnus is uh, 20 seconds, 40 seconds in front of me. I didn't know that at the time. I was just trying to save the position, save my honour. He played knight takes pawn, star move, best move. When he played that move, I nearly fell off my chair. That's true! That's true! I'm not joking. When Magnus played this move against me, I thought, oh no, Johnny, what's he doing to you? Now, I can't play knight takes knight. I'd love to, but because he's going to take my queen off. And if I take with the pawn, well, he's got bishop takes knight, followed by rook takes bishop check. And I could see that. Uh, no one silly could see that. So I knew there was only one move to play. So I grabbed his queen. And uh, as you can see, the chess.com analysis room gives me an exclamation mark. It says queen takes f6 is a great move. This is the only move that works and you found it. This removes an attacker that was threatened to capture one of your pieces. And that's that's why I played queen g5 instead of queen to h5 for that very reason. Anyway, he played bishop takes knight check exclamation mark. He's trying to uh, destroy um, the protection around my king. So I just took back with the pawn. I didn't panic. I took back with the pawn. And he gave me a knight check. Now I don't want to bring I don't want to bring my king out too early, but in actual fact, guess what? That's the best move. I, I looked at it and I thought about it for some time. I've got 58 seconds. Here I thought for some time and I played. I lost eight seconds thinking about this move. I played king f1. It's an inaccuracy. So Magnus has played an inaccuracy, and I've played an inaccuracy too. Uh, Magnus plays pawn takes, and now I play rook hits the knight. Okay, so I'm, I'm not happy about this position because I know it's complicated, and I haven't got much time. I've got 40 seconds. Well, I'm gonna. I know I've got my self self confidence. So I know that I'm very strong end game player, and I've always modelled myself on being a top end game player, as I know Magnus is. So I thought, well, this will be a battle of the end game players here. He played rook on the a file to d8. Star move, best move, Magnus. Well played. Played knight d4. The idea is this knight is uh, not well placed, and I want to play f3 and get my king up and connect my castles as rapidly as possible. Magnus played this move knight a6. 
it's here that I played f3. Now I've got a reason for that. The bishop hasn't got many squares. Now here Magnus played a certain move which is not the best. He played bishop here. Now the engine says, and it's a non-human move, the engine actually says that in this position, bishop here is the best move. Right? Now it's not a human type move because you think either oh, bishop's here and white plays pawn to e4, um, it's going to be difficult for you to um, uh, maneuver with your bishop and your bishop might be nullified. So Magnus has got to move rapidly and he wants to punish me for having 35 seconds on the clock. So he played bishop d5. And I was really happy then, so I thumped out the move c4. And now, as you can see, the bishop's got a choice. Bishop here, bishop here, and that's it to save his bishop. I thought he'd have to move the bishop back, but not Magnus Carlsen. Magnus played c5 and gets a star move. He leaves his bishop there for me to take. As soon as I saw this position, I've got 28 seconds on the clock. I thought to myself, aha, what I really need is a pawn stru structure. I saw his knights on the side of the board, and after pawn takes bishop, I realised my bishop is controlling all the knight squares, and my rook is also helping control those. And so the logic move to me um, was, I, I, I took 10 seconds to find it, pawn takes knight. He, he played pawn takes knight, now e4. Notice how I'm, I, I'm zeroing in and trying to keep the knight uh, asleep at the wheel. He played f5, best move. He wants to activate his pieces, split my pawns and, and uh, cause a, a nightmare for me. Anyway, I played bishop d3, star move, best move. And uh, it's here he played pawn takes pawn. Well, I thought, no choice, Johnny. I've got to play bishop uh, pawn takes pawn and secure my two pawns. Magnus being Magnus, he, he wants to fight. Plays f5, he wants to split me wide open, the dirty rat. Anyway, so I played rook to e1. It's not the best move. Rook to e1. Uh, it's an inaccuracy, right? So the best move is probably yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, pawn takes pawn or something. Pawn takes pawn and rook to d1, something like that. Okay, he played pawn takes pawn, so I played rook takes pawn, star move, best move. So I'm back to finding the best moves again. And uh, he played rook takes rook. So I thought, oh, good. So I took the rook off and he, he hit my bishop. So I thought, well, I'll just move back. And, and uh, as you can see, the evaluation bar says equal. And now he pushed the pawn. Well, this is not a great move. I'm winning. That's right. The evaluation bar just said white's just turned into an advantage. I played king to f2. Exclamation mark develops a piece, gets the castle working. And now white's got a big advantage. But I've got no time. I've got 1.6 seconds on my clock. And Magnus is probably smiling at this stage. Uh, he played knight c4, and then my next move, I was about to play. I didn't play it. I lost on time. But uh, I did have a one position against Magnus in the final position. And uh, my next move, I was about to play this move. I'll show it to you. Rook to d1. To threat the pawn. I thought it was a logical move. Uh, may not be the best, best move. Evaluation bar is not too happy with it. Oh no, it says Rook D1 is best. The chess engine on chess.com says Rook D1 is the best move. It's a star move, best move. So um, that is uh, where we ended up. And uh, White's got a slightly better game. Okay. So that's about the end of uh, my story. Um, I'm going to just show you the analysis here. Um, Rook to d1 is best, one sec. In this, in this game, I, um, I, uh, chess.com, what coach, he said certain things. Oh, rook d1. Oh, no, no, no. 
I lost on time. And now uh, the review. We're going to go to the game review. And uh, you will see that um, um, I played. I'm going to show you this. One second. I've got to show you here. I played with 93.2% accuracy, according to the chess.com analysis room engine. And Magnus played with 92.2%, which means that I played, I played better chess than Magnus. I, I couldn't believe it when I saw it, because I know Magnus probably plays an average of 94, 95%. Most of those super grand, grandmasters are up in the mid-90s. So he, this would be a slightly bad game for someone of his stature. And uh, I played at 93.2 and edged him out. But it gets better than that. When I look at the rating performance for the game, I played it at a massive 3,200 rating and Magnus played at 3,150. So I outplayed Magnus in rating performance for, for the game. And anyway, a chess.com coach, let's have a look and see, what the chess.com coach has to say. Well, the chess.com coach says, I'll make it bigger so you can read it. This is what the chess.com coach says about the game. Come on, Johnny. He says, great job completing this game review. Says, based on this game, he has some... Uh, uh, recommendations for me, but no, no, that's not what he said. He said something else too. He said, oh, here it is. He said here, chess.com coach said, you had a pretty competitive game there. He says the opening was balanced, which means that Magnus and I were equal in the opening. And I, I, I take pride in that because I know Magnus is such a... Uh, a uh, fantastic player and uh, it says it was it was a well fought middle game that you got the better of so the engine is saying that uh, engine coach is saying that i actually got a better game out of the uh, middle game the magnus right and then he says about the end game he said your end game precision was a cut above your opponents which means that in the end game I was playing a better end game than Magnus Carlsen. I thought, really? Well, I'll take those kudos and, and uh, pat myself on the back. Even though I lost the game, I'm quite proud of uh, the performance. And uh, I'm also very honoured, uh, my, my chess channel, very honoured and uh, we're very humble to uh, have had Magnus Carlsen in my stream this morning. So Magnus Carlsen, if you're out there and you feel that I'm um, having a dig at you, not at all, my good friend. Um, we honour you. We honour your greatness and uh, all the wonderful things that you've given to the chess community. So Magnus Carlsen, we salute you. And I am going to relinquish, because you beat me today, Magnus, you now are, again, the king of chess, right? Magnus Carlsen, the king of chess, right? There he is. Uh, I'm going to give him my chess crown. If he was here, I'd place it on his head. But because he's not here, I think I might wear it myself. Anyway, God bless you all. God bless your families. I hope you uh, enjoyed this uh, wonderful game. And uh, we'll catch you on our next stream or perhaps at the next Late Title Tuesday. And if you're a title player, watch out because I tried to adopt Magnus Carlsen. I've adopted uh, Grandmaster Hans Neiman and um, you could be next <laughs> on my wish list. Uh, and, and my wish list now is uh, Magnus, please come back and play me again so I can adopt your... I'll get the adoption papers out and, and uh, we'll, we'll file them and make it official and see if we can adopt Magnus Carlson. See you later, guys.